Most people in life are looking for not only how do I make a living and keep a retirement account so that I don't have to work into my old ages before and when I'm not able. They are looking for how do I find the right connections, the right love life, the right friend life, the right play life, the right theatrical life, what I mean as people who love music and whatnot and creative arts, but how can I build a life around my work week? You see, our lives exist not only in the nine to five of life, but our lives exist in the free time of life. If you're working harder and not smarter, that is on your life. If you're not willing to read a book from the library that is current about business or about being the best employee you can be to move yourself up a corporate ladder or to do your profession or your job better, that's on you and your own stupid bill, your own stupidity, if you will. There's plenty of videos on YouTube. The challenge you have to determine is whether or not the video is actually right for you. So when I talk about God, I'm talking about using the Lord above and not abusing his words or his verses to harm people, but actually paying attention to what makes life important. The most important person in your life is that of your lover. The most important person in your life is that of your wife or husband or life partner. The most important person of your life is the one that you've set to God as, this is what I'm looking for from my partner, my significant other, the one that will compliment me and help raise me up on the eagle's wings as it discusses in the many verses of around the world of the translations of the house of the Lord. You see, every nation was split off from one nation. Every language created its own divination and every culture and every ethnic group has a concept of God. A pagan knows this, regards this, and understands that in the Bible, one of the first verses of the Ten Commandments is, I am your Lord, your God, and you will have no other above me. The second valuable lesson is that I, the Lord above all, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, made everything in the world today. Therefore, a pagan is the most loving and kind religion to participate in. Pagans are often given the wrong definition by Christendom. The stupidity of man is not using and looking up the true word of Satan. Satan is an aggressor and a usurper and an assaulter on life. You probably know many people who are aligned with Satan. They attack your life. They attack your rights in particular that are gifted to us by God, not only through the Ten Commandments and other aspects of the Old Testament and of that of the Quran and the other religious translations of the Word of God and the channeling that was done in the old days of God, but openly and produced through the, the Treaty of Narcia when many bishops came together and decided what should we have as a standard Bible. But the reality of life is that every nation in the world knows and feels that there is a spirit of life. When I talk as a pagan pastor, it is my right to produce what I believe in. And what I believe in is that pagans are people who like people. What I believe in is that pa pagans are people who care for animals. What I believe in is that pagans are people who want to protect our environment because it produces our food. Every living creature has a function under God's roof, which is the world, the sky above, and the heavens of which we live below. As a pagan, I believe that people who love American life are the best people for our world. As a pagan, I believe that people are interested in foreign culture, but they pick and choose almost from a smorgasbord, from their past lives, from their karmatic lessons, what is right for them to participate in and what is not. Unfortunately, we live in a world of technology that can abuse our concepts and our beliefs. We can hear subliminal messaging that we don't really hear in our audible ear, but we hear in the unaudible aspect of our mind's eye. I won't go into the details on that because today's talk is about choosing to become a member of the International Pagan Federation. These are the basic principles I've shared with you of that federation. There is nothing in harm to listen to anything about what they believe in, 
and how they regard all the religions that are welcome in that world. Christendom tries to define that Jesus is the only way to the heavens above. And there is some truth to that, but a pagan believes in Jesus many times. A pagan believe, believes in prophets and people with gifts. A pagan is not afraid to understand the verses that says that God has the right to give people whatever he gives them in life. Whatever personal gifts you have, whatever spiritual gifts you have, whatever intellectual gifts you have, whatever emotional gifts you have, whatever leadership gifts you have, whatever teaching gifts you have, whatever gifts you have comes from the house of God. He breathed your soul into whatever body lineage you have. Bodies have defects, bodies have diseases, the body goes to rest when we die, but the soul ascends to heaven. The stupid people of Christendom, Catholic worlds, Lutheranism, and all the haters in the Methodist and other communities who like to label their versions of God and their versions of the Bible and their versions of Christendom and versions of Christ-based religions often deny the truth of the world. They pick a few verses and they pick hatred instead of love. The number one principle is a pagan of a pagan is love. We know how to pray in different ways. We will say, Lord of all things, great and small, please guide my ways in the world today. Let me be wise and wonderful with all. It's a simple prayer to say. We also know how to tap into the Holy Ghost to get the answers for our individual lives. I am an expert in that tool. I am totally a man who assigned and originated the faith fob based after historic tools of old that find water, that find fault lines, that find electrical currents in the world, but most importantly find the answers of the angels of the house of the Lord. If you want to know who your assigned angels are, you just have to ask God and listen and he may give you clear audience, which is the ability to hear the Lord. Some people really hear the booming voice of the Lord that says, Don't worry about that situation. I have it at hand. And it might be the only time you ever hear the true voice of the Lord calling to you through the most high angels that serve the Lord. Cherubim and seraphim are versions of angels, but there are legions of angels in the invisible world that protect your life. And you're a stupid moron if you don't realize that the force in the most famous films of all time like Star Wars and Potter are not visible to you today. You see, when we listen to Harry Potter, we recognize there are light and darkness in the world, just as it says in many of the works around the world on religion. What we also recognize from Potter is that there is a magical force of the Lord that can be not abused, but can be embraced and used to help us to have the right attitude, the right mind, and the right loving spirit of friends, and in time, we understand how to utilize it. When I talk as a priest, I'm trying to encourage young people to stop thinking that they are in control of their life, because the truth is they are never in control of another person's life. The best way to be in the right space at the right time to get the right life is to listen to God. Because the timing of the Lord is not your timing. The timing of your life may be completely off with where you're supposed to be, and you may be doing stupid things to deny God in your life today. But what I'm saying to you is that the people of God know love, honor, regard. They know how to love people, they know how to honor the people who came before them and are coming after them, and they know how to regard all human life great and small, from the largest of creatures that are supposedly not there, say like a Bigfoot that supposedly has totally cold with hair, but openly even the smartest of farling God knows. And what I have had proven to me in my life is that the angels around us even know when there is a worm that is abusive to some bag or some package or some food and they know it's there and they can tell you where to find it. They can also tell you when there's dangers in your home like the wrong kind of spiders, the wrong kind of scorpions, the wrong kind of snakes, or whatever stupid thing that you thought you'd embrace. 
The reality is that there are people who come to our world in America who do not regard the words of the Lord at all because their countries and their nations have forgotten who God is. They provide nothing more than mythological concepts to their children and they teach them to abuse the rest of the world. They teach them that they are the number one in the world. They teach them the lies of that. They teach them to hack people's computers, to devise ways to attack, and they teach them stupid principles that have nothing to do with the house of the Lord. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about God, and while you may have a different version of religion than me, I know how to access the angels around me. And that is no mental illness, you motherfucking stupid ass industry. That is a man saying, I will honor the Constitution of America where the First Amendment says, I have the right to freedom of religion, the right to freedom of assembly, and the right to profess the word and the name of the Lord any fucking way I choose. In our life, we also have the Second Amendment that says, I have the right to defend my life from stupid attacks of moronic and immoral people who come to our life and come to our nation with malintent, maleficent, and stupid intentions to harm our people. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth of God and the truth of God, the truth of Jesus, the truth of any prophet that came before or after his lineage that is so world famous is that love is the only thing that people need today. Food and shelter comes next. And finally, every other aspect of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is essential to live, including self-actualization because that celebrates the soul that the Lord above chose to gift into whatever form and name of temple he has for you that might be full of defects, might be full of imperfections, might be full of cellular degenerations, and all kinds of disease eventually takes our lives. But the soul in the end of our life goes back to God.